Here are a few of the most interesting ways males attract mates in nature. Number 10, Water Boatmen. All over the world, a tiny little insect known as the Water Boatman lives in fresh water. Growing to a rather unimpressive length of around a half an inch, they're really not much to look at for us. However, they're known for one amazing feat, and let's just say it's super weird. A few years back, it was crowned as the world's loudest creature relative to body size, and they owe it all to their um, little guy. That's right, water boatmen use their genitals to do mating calls. These little guys can use their genitals to sing a song that's nearly 100 decibels loud. As a point of reference, a noise that loud is equivalent to sitting in a front row of an orchestra. If they ever start playing Beethoven, that would be even more impressive. According to experts, most of that sound is lost in the water. So let's just say if someone is strolling along a riverbank and some water boatmen are performing, people nearby can hear it. While scientists still aren't totally sure how such tiny little creatures can make such loud noises, they're curious to find out, as they'll still be doing research on these guys. Number 9. Sage Grouse Not only does the greater sage grouse hold the distinction of being the largest grouse in North America, but the dudes wear the breasts in the relationship. The sage grouse is found in the western United States and parts of southern Canada. The male birds have white, fluffy breasts. During mating season, their breasts are on full display when they inflate two air sacs. Aside from looking pretty ridiculous, these birds are renowned for their bizarre yet fascinating mating rituals. Their rituals even have a name. It's known as the Lek mating system. Essentially, the birds will gather each spring uh, for a dance off between the males to see who can attract a mate. The male birds will strut around while the females watch. The ladies then select the most attractive male based on their strutting skills, with the dominant male sometimes mating with up to 80% of the female population. Number 8. Giraffes You guys know how giraffes have those super long necks? Did you know it comes in handy when trying to seduce a mate? With a neck that measures up to 6 feet long, their neck alone is longer than most people are tall. Such a prominent feature comes in handy for a giraffe for a variety of reasons. They'll use their necks for sparring, as males are trying to gain the respect of the females. By establishing a higher place in the social hierarchy, a male giraffe will be more likely to approach a female giraffe. After the males get a female to agree to their advances, that's when things get really weird. Before a giraffe romp takes place, the female has to uh, go in the male's mouth. But why though? In order to determine if a prospective female is fertile, the male giraffe has to do a little face test. Really though, how would these guys know what to taste for? Number 7. Bowerbirds For most of us guys, anytime we bring a lady over, we make sure that our place is at least halfway presentable, right? Well, bowerbirds know this better than perhaps anyone else. Found in the forests of New Guinea and Australia are some of nature's most interesting little animals. Male bowerbirds will build some very elaborate nests in order to attract a mate. The wild part is that each structure is pretty unique and they'll often use random objects such as glass, bottles, plastic toys, and anything else they can get their beaks on. These birds are basically interior decorators or architects who will literally use almost anything to adorn their nests in order to attract some ladies. Ah, nature. What's even more interesting is the fact that male bowerbirds have been known to sabotage their competition's nests. These guys will do whatever it takes to win. Number 6. Hooded Seals Hooded seals make their home in cold regions of the North Atlantic, often on packs of drifting ice. Growing nearly 9 feet long, hooded seals are known for their impressive size. But they also demonstrate some really interesting breeding habits. The hood on the males is what gives these seals their name. The males use their hoods in order to make sounds. The males use their hood to whenever they feel threatened and also when competing for resources such as food and shelter. It's also a sign of aggression that tells other males to back off. However, in order to attract female partners, the males will also inflate the hood. This pinkish balloon-like hood signals to the female seals that these guys are single and ready to mingle. While the hood basically looks like the seals are blowing bubblegum out of their noses, this is apparently a huge turn-on for the lady seals. The seals can even bounce the hood around, it just showing off their massive nasal balloon doesn't quite do the trick. Number 5. Frigate Bird Frigate birds are all over tropical oceans all over the planet. If you see one, and 
first glance, you might think, hey, that's sort of a cool looking bird with long beaks, dark black feathers, and a wingspan of roughly seven and a half feet. These birds do look cool. The most amazing thing these birds can do is probably the fact that they can soar through the air for weeks at a time without stopping. They're able to use the wind currents from warm updrafts to keep them up. Whenever they get hungry, they're able to quickly swoop down to the surface of the ocean and snatch fish and squid. They'll even rob other seabirds of their prey. Anyways, we're talking about interesting ways to attract females, so let's get to how these guys do it. During mating season, the males will display their impressive gular pouches. They'll inflate these pouches when they're trying to seduce a female, usually on a secluded oceanic island where thousands of frigate birds go to produce. As soon as the first egg is laid, their gular pouch will begin to deflate. Okay, there's a really inappropriate analogy to be made here, but we'll spare you of the obvious reference of where we could have gone with that. Number four, long-tailed widow bird. It's the ultimate catch-22 of the animal kingdom. Their feathers attract mates, but also make it easy for predators to find them. It's all about trade-offs for the long-tailed widow bird. The males have long been known for their distinctive long tails. Because of their interesting situation, these birds have been studied for years, dating all the way back to Darwin. In the 1980s, Malte Anderson was able to prove that female long-tailed widow birds did, in fact, prefer longer tails. So, how'd he do it? In a nutshell, he clipped parts of the long tails off some males and glued them to the shorter tails of other males. He found that the longer the tail on the male, the more success they had during mating season. The finding was significant because it upheld one of Darwin's more controversial theories, that some male ornaments aren't the product of natural selection, but the product of female choice. In other words, the long tails of these birds served only to attract a mate. Number three, peacocks. Peacocks are often regarded as one of the most beautiful birds on the planet. Their colorful and tall tail feathers make them one of the most iconic members of the animal kingdom. Unsurprisingly, the feathers are a major factor when it comes time for mating. Peacocks put on an impressive displays when they're trying to woo their ladies. The ladies will select their partner based on the size and beauty of the male's tails. While the dominant male will often breed with many peahens, the females often become aggressive with each other to get a shot at hooking up with the dominant male. Does this sound like a Justin Bieber concert yet? Anyways, this is another good example of natural selection at work. Since peahens have a known preference for mates with colorful feathers, the peacocks with the most colorful feathers will produce the most offspring. Number two, proboscis monkey. Obviously, if anyone takes one look at a proboscis monkey, the first thing they'd notice is the fact that they have big noses. It's just the males that have the extra big noses, and for them, it actually works in their favor in the monkey society. Somehow, some way, the ladies of this monkey society love guys with big noses. Also known as the long-nosed monkey because, come on, duh, these primates are found mainly in the Southeast Asian islands of Borneo, where they coexist with orangutans. They just don't have the bumper stickers to prove it. Their unusually big noses have long been studied by biologists who had no evolutionary explanation for why their noses are the way that they are except for until recently. Studies have found that there's a clear correlation between the size of the male's nose and the number of females he has access to. So yeah, for monkeys, size does matter in the nose. In addition, studies also found that males with larger noses also tended to have larger body mass among cylindrical things, if you can catch our drift. Number one, pufferfish. Crop circles are the subject of endless fascination. Remember that Mel Gibson movie about crop circles? Anyways, did you know that there are also crop circles underwater? Weird, right? Well, technically, these circles aren't really crop circles, but rather geometric circles on the ocean floor. These geometric circles are basically the product of pufferfish fishing for a date. White-spotted pufferfish will spend up to six weeks perfecting their love nests, only to use them for a short romp lasting just a few seconds. You would think that for that much effort just to get a girlfish, the guys would get together to discuss a new plan of action, right? First discovered in 1995 by divers in Japan, the circles were a mystery until just a short while ago. The tiny pufferfish, who are just roughly five inches long, will flap about and labor for weeks to create these circles that sometimes measure up to seven feet in diameter. Once the intense work on the circles is done, female pufferfish then inspect the work and decide if they like what they see. If they do, then it's time for a few seconds of fun and then they're back to doing whatever it is female pufferfish like to do. 
here's what's next.